Hi everyone, my name is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In this video, we are going to learn what is the main difference between coroutine scope and supervisor scope. This question is often asked in Android interviews. Both coroutine scope and supervisor scope are coroutine builder functions that we can use to start coroutines. Let's understand the usage of these two one by one. First, we will start with coroutine scope. Here you can see I have three suspending functions to get config, users and chat rooms. In every function, I have this delay call to delay the execution and then I am returning the result. So basically, I am trying to mimic an API call here. And you have to carefully see these functions. The first one get config is taking 3 seconds to return the result. The get users is taking 2 seconds and get chat rooms is taking 1.5 seconds but it will always throw an exception. Now I will use coroutine scope to call these three functions concurrently. So inside main I will use coroutine scope and inside I can use async to get results of these three functions. I am getting users, rooms and config. For now, I will just print the values of these three results. So here we are printing the results and because I know that rooms will throw an exception, I am wrapping it inside try and catch. Now if I run this code, what will happen? Let's find out. You can see we got an exception. Let's try to understand what happened. Now here this chat room takes 1.5 seconds and then it throws the exception. Users takes 2 seconds and config 3. So before the completion of these two functions, we got exception. And in case of coroutine scope, whenever one child fails, it cancels all the other children. And that's what happened. We got exception here and these two were cancelled. But what if this get users requires only one second? Let's try again. You can see we got the users and then we got the exception and we didn't get get config. I already told you that whenever one child fails inside coroutine scope, it cancels all the other children's and it throws the exception to the parent. So if you wrap coroutine scope inside try and catch, you will catch the exception here as well. For example, if I write here exception, and I can print here inside parent catch block. We will get this output as well. Let's try. You can see we got users, then we got the exception and then we can see we get this message that is inside parent catch block. That means we were here. But what if we use supervisor scope? When using supervisor scope, if any child fails, it won't fail the parent coroutine and other children. So let's try supervisor scope this time. I will replace coroutine scope with supervisor scope. And rest of the things are same. Let's try running this code again. You can see we got users, then we got the exception and then we got the app config and this time we are not inside this catch block. So that is the major difference between coroutine scope and supervisor scope. Now you can pick any one between coroutine scope or supervisor scope based on your requirement. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something. Thanks for watching. This is Bilal Khan now signing off.